So these are startups that are basically getting to the end of their friends and family money. So they have to go to investors. So, uh, and, and what I've told them is I said, do you ever speak to investors and they smile after a few minutes and you think it's a yes and it isn't. And they say, that happened just yesterday. I said, here's the deal. Investors don't smile. <laughs> it's, it's about money. Here's why they're smiling. In two and a half minutes of a 20 minute presentation, they've already decided they don't want to give you money. And they're smiling because they don't want to be rude because they saw all the time you put into your, your PowerPoint. And so they're smiling like this, but they've already decided it's a no. That's why at the end of it, you think they're going to say, how do we get started? And they say, well, let me think about it. Very interesting. And you never hear them again. And, and, and these people in the Zoom calls, oh, my God, that's exactly what they're doing. And I said, so here's a, here's a little bit of a Michelangelo mindset and how you can see into people, find out where they're coming from. So I'm glad this is on video. I, I think you'll like this. So when they smile, and you know that the smile is not a yes, it's a no, but they don't want to be rude. What you say to them, and I give them a script, is, can we pause for a moment? And they're worried because they're afraid that you caught them being rude inside and smiling so that you don't see it. And they go, what? Yeah, can we pause for a moment? And they go, okay. And then you look at them and you hold them in your eyes and you say, when we started this conversation, we were like this. Here was you with money. Here is me with a company that needs money. And now we're like this. Here is you with money. Here is me with a company that's not going to get any of it. So you were listening for something or looking for something and you didn't see it or hear it. So in the time remaining, you know, forget the rest of the presentation. What were you listening for or looking for? And what's happened is you've totally disarmed them. And they're going to go, what? You could say, I think what you're looking for and listening for is an investment that's going to work, especially to make up for the investments in your company that haven't worked. So why don't you, can you tell me about a big winner that someone in your company brought in or you brought in? And so you get them to talk. And the more they talk, the more they're invested in you. And here's where you turn around a conversation that was at a dead end into a ongoing relationship. And you say, and then you say, oh, we could cover those things. But if you can't cover them, you say, you know, I'm in a group of a bunch of startups and I could introduce you to three companies that fit what you're looking for. <laughs> And I can send you information on them. And I'm not going to tell them, you know, so I'm not going to have them hitting on you. But might I send you some information from some of the other startups that might be a good fit for you? And then if you like it, I'll make an introduction. So what's happened is you took a relationship where they were smiling and you were never going to see them again. And now you're focused on their success. You're not focused on yourself. You're going to introduce three other startups to them. And so everybody's going to be grateful to you. And you can go back to all of them afterwards because you've just started a relationship built on generosity. Wow, that is brilliant. So then you end up with people who are in sales meetings that aren't going to go well, helping out the other companies in the startups on the presumption that these other companies are kind of doing a similar thing for them. And you're only offering people companies that you think suit them, what they're looking for. So people must be very familiar with the companies in, in the Michael, Michelangelo mindset, correct? No, absolutely. And in fact, I'm, I'm going gonna, uh, gonna to give you, um, when we write the book, there is a statue of David in the Michelangelo mindset that you need to create. And I've already created it at least three times with you. Do you want to know what it is? Yes, indeed. What you want to create in a conversation with other people is for them to go think, wow, hmm, yes. <laughs> and what wow is, I can't believe what I just saw, heard, or read. And with my suicidal patients, they couldn't believe what they felt because they felt hope. The hmm is, this is too good to ignore. And then the yes is, 
This is how I see we can use it sold. So for a year and a half, I've done a bunch of things, and this I didn't send you in my bio because it's a little dated. But for a year and a half, I played Steve Jobs coming back from the dead. I had the turtleneck on, I had the glasses on. And the whole purpose of this presentation where I played him from 1996 to 2007, when he came back to Apple and introduced the iPhone, was to show a two, and a, a two minute video, which was a dramatization of Steve Jobs discovering the mouse and the graphical user interface at Xerox Park. And if you're watching this or listening, look up Xerox Park National Geographic Steve Jobs, and it takes you right to it. And in the dramatization, and we could even play it, but I'll imitate it. Here's my Steve Jobs things. I'm not going to run, get the turtleneck. Mm -hmm. And so in, in the, uh, in the video, and you'll see, and I'll just play him and you'll see the wow. Hmm, yes. So he's like this smartest man in the room, you know, there at Xerox park, he sees the Xerox technician using the mouse and the icons and he leans in and you see on his face this, wow, I can't believe what I'm seeing. And then smartest man in the room says to the technician, can I try it? And so then he sits down and when his index finger touches the mouse and the icons go on the screen, he starts to sweat. <sighs> And Steve Wozniak is with him. And actually on this video clip, Wozniak gives some commentary. And, and, and Steve Jobs looks back at Wozniak. And Wozniak said, when he looked at me for the hmm, because Steve Wozniak was a thinker, Steve Wozniak said, I told, I told him, once they go there, they're not going back. They're not going to go back to typing. And then, uh, and then, the video goes on and Steve Jobs is playing with the mouse. And then Walter Isaacson, who wrote one of the books, comments, they didn't know what to do with this at Xerox. And so what was happening is Steve Jobs was thinking, hmm, we got to do something with this. And then the clip ends with Walter Isaacson saying uh, they didn't know what to do at Xerox, but Steve Jobs went back to Apple and here's the yes, and created the Macintosh. So can you see that, that whoever you're with, and I think, am I right that I've created a few wow hmm yeses with you in, the, in, in our conversation already? Oh, definitely. I think right away at the beginning. So that's, yeah. what you, that's what you want to do. And by the way, why we call that the Statue of David is, isn't that what you felt when you finally met the person you were going to marry? You know, when you thought to yourself, this is the one, wasn't there a wow, hmm, yes. You know, when you didn't know if you could buy that Tesla and it was more than you could afford, but when you went there, it was irresistible. And if you think about it, the way Steve Jobs and Elon Musk make presentations, it is overflowing with triggering wow, hmm, yes. That's got to be difficult for the average person to do, though. I mean, you're talking about people who have IQs that are through the roof. Is there something that the average person can do to get that kind of reaction? I mean, you're clearly very smart. Well, I think what you can do is, first of all, you need to have some self-awareness and realize that the more pushy you are, the more anxious you come off. And you come off as hungry. And all you actually have to do is have a beginner's mindset, which means you have an open mind, and all you have to be is curious what they're listening for. I spoke in Moscow along with a Nobel Prize winner, uh, Daniel Kahneman. He wrote Thinking Fast and Slow. Oh, yeah. I've read that. Yeah. And, uh, and it was interesting because I, I asked them, I said, why are you having me? You know, I, I, I'm... I'm not Daniel Kahneman. I'm not a Nobel Prize winner. I'm not Jordan Peterson. Why the heck would you have me? And they said, they said, and here's a wild hmm, yes. They said, doctor, his book did not go viral. So uh, here's some, here's a little tip on creating titles. So here's a tangent, but it's a good nugget. What you want to do is expand mental real estate in people's minds. 
And the person who introduced that term to me was a, a fellow named Tony Baxter. He was one of the lead Imagineers at Disney. And he said, Pirates of the Caribbean owns the word pirates in the minds of kids. So Disney owns pirates and they think of Pirates of the Caribbean. So what you want to do is come up with something that seems familiar, that gets in, and then you twist it and you get more mental real estate. So the English version of the book they were referring to is here. It's called Talking to Crazy. And again, this is not about mental illness. It's about how do you deal with people who drive you crazy? So that has some mental real estate, because when I told people I'm writing a book called Talking to Crazy, they say, oh, I need that today, <laughs> you know, because I, I deal with that every day. <laughs> uh, but when it went to Russia, the title became How to Talk to Assholes, and it went viral. <laughs> that was the translation? That was the translation. <laughs> Russians. Uh, so, that's great. So that, but can you see? But that's a wow. Hmm, yes. Oh, yeah. So so you want to grab people like that? Oh, that's interesting. I can't believe that they switched the title that badly. Yeah. Well, um, the I spoke with who wrote The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Mark. Wow, Manson. Mark Manson. Mark Manson. Thank you very much. That could have been bad. Yeah. And I mean, that's another one of those titles that really takes off. Although the book's valuable too, but interesting. There was a book I was going to write, but it's too negative for me in my life. But this is an automatic bestseller. And if you're listening and you want to write it, it's a bestseller. And, it, and it's called <laughs> Get Even Plus 10%. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah.